Chapter 381, Wormhole Ambush Inside the wormhole, time and space were distorted. Countless points of light arced through the surroundings, resembling shooting stars. A flying shuttle was currently flying through the wormhole, heading toward the direction of the Great Wall University. Because they were in a wormhole, for every second that passed, a vast amount of distance was being covered. But the closer they got to their target, the more nervous the freshmen inside the flying shuttle became. Their hearts pounded rapidly and almost leaped up to their throats. This plan is too crazy, can it succeed? I don't know, but we can only give it a shot. That's right, let's go for broke. Numerous voices of worry could be heard from within the crowd. Phone Lin stood at the forefront and spoke, don't worry. We have already done our best. Next, we can only depend on fate. Even if we failed in the end, we wouldn't have died pointlessly by wasting time away while waiting for our deaths. We have already done all we can. His voice was powerful and was like a stabilizing needle that calmed the hearts of everyone. That was right, all of them were in such a perilous situation. What was the point of being worried when they had already done all they could? Other than their lives, they had nothing left to lose. Alas, their lives were the thing they didn't want to lose the most. Their captain Phong Lin had explained his crazy plan to them, and it caused their hearts to shiver. The extent of danger was unbelievable and it was an incomparably bold one. After hearing it, all of them ran through the plan again and again, and they couldn't help but admit that as of now, that crazy plan suggested by Phong Lin was truly one that had the highest possibility of success. Let's go for broke. Danger could be the best source of stimulating one's potential. When they thought of the scenes described in the plan, their bodies couldn't help but tremble. Danger and opportunity truly coexisted together. If they failed, they would simply die and enter the reincarnation cycle early. There was nothing left to say. But maybe, what if they really succeeded? That would be impressive. They would become heroes of the Great Wall University and humanity. They would be legends. The shuttle flew rapidly through the wormhole as everyone waited with bated breath. Phong Lin narrowed his eyes as he surveyed the area ahead. Although the plan was crazy and steeped in danger, he was fully prepared for every situation. A huge energy reaction has been discovered ahead, please take note. A strange phenomenon occurred in the wormhole, a giant spirit beast has appeared. All of a sudden, the scanning system of the flying shuttle beeped as the AI let out a sound of warning while flashing a blinding red light. Everyone instantly started to focus and went to the front cabin, staring at the outside. In their vision, they saw a giant fork in front, and an incomparably large figure emerged from nowhere. Its body was perfectly round and resembled a giant whale. It was currently roaring at the flying shuttle and flying toward them from the back. A surge of electromagnetic waves instantly gushed over. The entire flying shuttle trembled from the impact. The energy control systems in the flying shuttle were under interference. Light flashed on and off, flickering incessantly. Boom. The gigantic figure flew over, causing the wormhole to distort. The giant whale was staring at the flying shuttle, like how a hunter stared at its prey. It then butted its head over. Phong Lin didn't panic. He had been expecting something like this and had waited for a long time. It's getting nearer, it's getting nearer. His eyes stared fixedly at the whale's direction. And when its distance from the flying shuttle became sufficiently near, Phong Lin decisively gave an order. Blast out the crimson refinement gunpowder. Poo, pew, pew. The panels at the back of the flying shuttle slid open as a hundred metallic cannons appeared and fired at the same time. They linked with each other as a giant net shot out, wanting to entangle the whale. After that cannon shots rang out repeatedly. A thick reddish cloud of substance erupted forth, being emitted from red crystals. The smell of gunpowder permeated the entire wormhole. However, due to their small sizes, the crystals appeared to be harmless. That giant whale also felt the same. It didn't guard itself and continued to headbutt over. 
At the next instant, the red crystals blasted into it. It was like a spark of flame dropped into a pool of gasoline. Its entire body instantly combusted. The spirit whale was an entity formed from energy, how vast must the amount of energy within it be? Under the catalysis of the crimson refinement gunpowder, the energy within the spirit whale instantly reacted, and the reaction spread through its entire body like a plague, setting its entire body on fire. Its internal structure was rapidly destroyed, and it could feel pain from the depths of its soul. The giant spirit whale opened its maw and let out roars of pain while sending out energy blasts randomly. Its struggles caused the wormhole tunnel to tremble unstably. The energy waves gushed over, causing the flying shuttle to shudder. Activate the protective energy barrier. At this moment, Fong Lin couldn't care about the remaining energy reserves. The flying shuttle had to defend against the impact of this attack no matter what. If not, even before the spirit whale died, the flying shuttle would crumble apart first. That's right. Phone Lin's plan wasn't to evade the spirit race. It was to counter ambush the giant spirit whale in the wormhole tunnel instead. Phone Lin wanted to kill it. The tunnel in the wormhole was very narrow, and there was simply no way to evade. Once they succeeded, they would be able to deal with the spirit race's pursuit within the wormhole once and for all. There would be no need for them to drift aimlessly in the universe, and they could return to the Great Wall University in three hours. At that time, no matter how ferocious the spirit race was, they wouldn't dare attack the university. Upon impact, the protective barrier shimmered but managed to hold. Phone Lin stared fixedly at the spirit whale, the others did so as well. The atmosphere was so tense that no one dared to breathe loudly. The red-colored flames burned the whale, and it trembled in agony amidst roars of pain. Increase our speed and rush ahead. Phong Lin seemed to have sensed something. He quickly gave the order. The flying shuttle instantly responded. Flames shot out from its tail as it rushed forth with great speed. Anger flashed in the eyes of the spirit whale. It snarled and increased its speed, wanting to perish together with these detestable humans. The flying shuttle entered its maximum speed, but the giant whale got increasingly closer and was about to come in contact with it. Fire the second wave of crimson refinement gunpowder. Bang! Another hundred cannon shells filled with the crimson refinement gunpowder blasted out, heavily injuring the spirit whale. Its gigantic body was like a huge target. However, due to its vibrant life force, it wasn't dead yet. It held with madness and continued to pursue. Just like this, the flying shuttle and the spirit whale began a game of cat and mouse. Phong Lin intentionally controlled the speed of the flying shuttle to drag the time. The longer the time dragged on, the greater would the injury of the spirit whale be. It would eventually succumb to its injuries and die. The reality was as he expected as well. After being blasted twice, the strength of the spirit whale dwindled rapidly. It no longer had the strength to match the flying shuttle's speed. Aim for its life when it's injured. Phong Lin instantly gave the order. Third wave of crimson refinement gunpowder, fire. Another blast of cannon fire enveloped the spirit whale. The explosions were so intense that the wormhole tunnel behind the flying shuttle had also crumbled into pieces. The flying shuttle shuddered from the impact. Everyone gathered and cheered with joy from the bottom of their hearts. Great! We've finally succeeded. We are safe now and can finally return to the Great Wall University. Everyone had joyful smiles on their faces. Had they really succeeded? It wasn't easy at all. Warning, warning. An extremely high-grade energy fluctuation is discovered behind the shuttle. It should be a gigantic-scale spirit life form. A warning rang out as an inauspicious red light flickered in the shuttle. The cheers of everyone stopped abruptly. A moment later, a gigantic spirit black hole appeared behind the shuttle. It was incomparably deep, like a bottomless pit that could even devour energy. In fact, even the wormhole was being devoured bit by bit. 
It's that spirit black hole. It was it who killed the instructor. We are doomed for sure, we won't be able to escape. That spirit black hole looked extremely bizarre. It drifted over silently, appearing slow but was extremely fast in reality. An intense roar rang out, a roar from the depths of its heart, filled with anger and madness. Open fire. Open fire now. Activate the cannon. Chapter 382, Fire Cannon. The roaring sounds were loud and filled with craziness and brutality. Its face was savage and distorted. Fire the cannon. Extremely enraged howls that were like the sounds of thunderbolts erupted through the dead silence. The space shuttle was mobilized, exposing over 100 cannons outside and pointing them toward the black shadow that was closing in slowly. The spirit black hole got closer at a rate that seemed to be both slow and fast at the same time. Its body that was like a black hole kept on engulfing, even the wormhole itself kept on breaking down. It was so suffocating that it made one feel despair. It got closer silently. In front of the black hole, the space shuttle was like a small fish before the mouth of a huge whale. No matter how hard it struggled, it was unable to break away from its fate of being engulfed. The eyes of everyone in the space shuttle opened wide, their faces filled with despair. Before such a terrifying monster, even the instructor who had been an elite adept had been swallowed in one go, unable to put up any resistance, let alone them who were merely grand cultivators. They were doomed. Everyone's heart sank into endless darkness, feeling that all hopes were lost. That furious bellow sounded like the first bolt of thunder in the stuffy world, waking up all living creatures. If one didn't erupt amidst the silence, they would die amidst the silence. Fong Lin let out an enraged bellow. Boom boom boom. The space shuttle launched the cannons on both sides concurrently, and brilliant sparks went smashing out like a hurricane. The densely packed crimson refinement gunpowder formed large areas of red fog that filled up the space in the wormhole. However, the spirit black hole didn't budge in the least. It merely engulfed deeply and swallowed those red fog into its stomach. The black hole's stomach shot out a stretch of red light as if explosives had been set off. However, they were quickly suppressed and no longer had any motion. It's useless. It's impossible for us to escape. The spirit black hole had even engulfed the instructor. It's not something that we can fight against. Is our cultivation path going to come to a stop here? Everyone's countenance turned grim. They didn't kick up a fuss but were numb as wooden blocks. There was no grief as great as despair. The spirit black hole's appearance made them give up completely. They couldn't summon any will to put up a resistance. However, Fong Lin didn't care about that. Even if he was in the most dangerous impasse, he wouldn't give up. Even if he were to die, he would bite a chunk of meat off from the enemy. Launch out all the crimson refinement gunpowder. Fong Lin gave the order, and the space shuttle activated all the cannons. A total of 1,300 cannonballs shot out, sending an endless stretch of red fog at the spirit black hole. The spirit black hole was unable to engulf them all in one go. When its body came into contact with them, it started burning up, forming jets of flames. It's effective. Everyone's eyes lit up, but this little bit of hope didn't last long before it was immediately extinguished. The spirit black hole suddenly opened a huge black mouth and engulfed fiercely, even starting to chew on the wormhole itself. The red flames started to dissipate. When their hopes were destroyed, they would only feel even greater despair than just plain despair. Everyone fell silent. They had utilized all of their means. This time around, there was really no more hope. However, Fong Lin didn't think the same. Things weren't over yet. His neck swelled up and green veins popped up as he let out an enraged bellow, launched the crimson refinement cannon. Boom. A huge cannon as thick as a pillar extended out from the top of the space shuttle. It was the space shuttle's main cannon. The others were still wearing a numb expression. When the hundreds of cannonballs were launched concurrently but were useless, what could a big cannon do? 
No matter how they resisted, they would still end up dead. Everything was in vain. Boom. A round metallic cannonball was sent smashing out without a trace. It suddenly split up into many red spots and was then completely engulfed by the black hole, not having any other activity. Everyone's expression was that of despair. However, at the next instant. Roar. The spirit black hole suddenly opened its mouth furiously. There were purplish-red flames burning the inside of its mouth, and it was in great agony. This flame had an unprecedented level of blaze. What? It's actually effective. The freshman stared with eyes wide open in disbelief. Phone Lin's eyes lowered. Ambushing the spirit race wasn't something that ordinary people could do, let alone when they were just a bunch of freshmen. How could he possibly not make more preparations? Other than refining most of the ingredients into a simplified version of the Crimson Refinement gunpowder, he had also secretly refined over 100 Crimson Refinement cinnabar pills. These were his true secret weapon. They were prepared for when the Crimson Refinement gunpowder was insufficient to deal with the huge spirit race beast. He made use of mechanical manufacturing technology together with the help of the AI to create three metallic cannonballs. They could smash the Crimson Refinement cinnabar pills into the spirit and then unleash their effect. He hadn't expected that he didn't use it against that spirit whale, but ended up using it on this spirit black hole instead. It was a success on the first strike. Hope started to appear in everyone's eyes. However, Fong Lin wasn't careless. He shouted out abruptly, AI. Drive on at full speed. Although this attack was effective. This spirit black hole's body was extremely massive, and the damage inflicted onto it wasn't fatal. If they didn't leave now, what were they waiting for? Strong flames shot out from the back of the space shuttle, and it moved at full speed, rapidly drawing distance away from the black hole. After encountering many attacks previously, this was the first time the spirit black hole was injured. It seemed to be completely enraged, and its massive body kept on expanding and contracting non-stop. A huge black mouth opened up and spewed out a seething particle tempest. Caught in the particle tempest, the space shuttle was like a small bird caught in a hurricane. It swayed about as if it was at risk of being destroyed at any moment. Boom. Another metallic cannonball smashed out and made use of the chance to land into the spirit black hole's mouth. The flames in the black hole's mouth seemed to have received fuel. They immediately seethed and burned even more fiercely as they expanded out. The spirit black hole's body instantly contracted like a deflated balloon. The space shuttle took the opportunity to draw distance between them once again. Although the spirit black hole's body resembled the black hole and it had the ability to engulf, it was essentially still a living creature. It howled in great agony from the scorching flames, and many black blisters appeared on the surface of its body. When they broke away from its body, they formed many spirit monsters. In the blink of an eye, their numbers grew into thousands or ten thousands. They gushed forth like tidal waves, blocking up the wormhole and surging toward the space shuttle. Seeing that the freshmen were still in a daze, Phone Lin let out a furious bellow, What are you guys still in a daze for? Take control of the battery. Launch the cannons. Smash these damned spirit monsters into dregs. Only then did everyone seem as if they had just woken up from a dream and quickly got moving. Although their hopes were slim, there was still a chance for them to survive this. They had no other option than to fight with their lives on the line. These people were all elites amongst the elites and had experienced a long period of military training. They controlled the many cannons on the space shuttle, rapidly firing them. Many light energy cannonballs smashed out like rainwater crushing the surrounding spirit life forms. An interstellar pursuit between humans and spirits started. Phone Lin took charge in the control cabin. His eyes fixed on the spirit black hole's massive body. As the spirit race kept on breaking down, he saw that the black hole's body was also shrinking incessantly. However, the injuries from the flames didn't shrink. Clearly, the black hole was no longer able to suppress its injuries. They mustn't drag on the battle in the wormhole. 
the longer they stayed here, the larger the amount of energy depleted. If things were dragged too long, they would be lost in the wormhole due to having their energy completely depleted. The spirit black hole didn't need to do anything. The spirit black hole moved the energy on its body to suppress the flames, wanting to recover. However, how could Phone Lin possibly give him the chance to recover? He personally took action, controlling the cannon and the very last cannonball that comprised of the Crimson Refinement Cinnabar. The cannonball drew a beautiful trajectory in the air and accurately shot toward the black hole's injury. It entered deeper into the black hole's body and then exploded. Boom! Red flames burst out within the black hole and rapidly extended into a huge lump of flames, drowning the black hole. An extremely enraged roar rang out. The spirit black hole suddenly exploded, and an endless amount of energy mixed with flames drowned the wormhole completely, destroying it. Those spirit monsters were instantly blasted into dregs in the storm. An extremely battered space shuttle silently disappeared into the distance. Chapter 383, Unrivaled Military Merit A space shuttle with a battered exterior was driving in the dark and abyssal wormhole without a sound. Alert! 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 The energy level has dropped to a dangerous level. 20%, 18%, 16%, the space shuttle's AI released a piercing warning, and red light flashed non-stop. It was silent inside the cabin. After a series of battles and going through drastic changes, everyone's stamina and mental energy had almost been completely depleted. They fell limp to the ground. Hey! Was that spirit black hole really killed by us? We survived, a numb voice rang out, breaking the silence and filled with perplexity. That's right. We're saved. Someone stood up and said outright with a strong voice that had unshakable confidence and determination. Phone Lin's voice broke the silence like sunlight shining through the dark clouds thoroughly illuminating the silence in everyone's heart. We're saved. We've won. Hurrah. Hurrah team leader. Hurrah Great Wall University. Hurrah mankind. The numbed faces slowly changed and regained vigor. What followed the long silence were cheers that were even more fervent and intense than ever before. The atmosphere in the space shuttle was like boiling water, with cheers ringing through the sky. It was extremely seething. The suppressed emotions were like lava that had been silent in a volcano for 1,000 years and then erupting, unable to calm down even after very long. Phone Lin smiled and looked at this scene, not stopping them. After surviving the audacious battle against the spirit race, everyone had the right to feel happy and proud. Everyone was anxious to head back. If they were to travel through the wormhole at full speed, it would take them three hours at most to return to the Great Wall University. However, to everyone, this was extremely long. The warning that the energy index kept on plunging also made everyone extremely anxious. Every passing second felt like a year. The danger had yet to pass completely. If the energy was completely depleted and they had yet to arrive back at Great Wall University they would be shredded up by the space-time tempest in the wormhole. However, there was nothing they could do except to move on, hoping that luck would be on their side. Fortunately, when the space shuttle's energy had plunged to the 5% threshold, the space shuttle finally broke out from the wormhole, and the Great Wall University that was formed from a stretch of stars appeared before them. They were back. Great Wall University before everyone could cheer, the Great Wall University's defense system immediately reacted and issued a warning. This is the Great Wall University. Report where you come from immediately. If there are no replies after three minutes, we'll commence the attack. We're the Great Wall University's freshmen and we've been ambushed by the spirit race while undergoing a mission. We've just escaped and returned, Phong Lin immediately replied through the Flower Fruit Mountain. What? The massive Great Wall University was instantly taken by astonishment. The space shuttle had just landed at the harbor when a group of valiant-looking generals led a group of soldiers toward them. You're the captain, Phong Lin. 
At the sight of how dispirited Fong Lin and the others were, their expressions immediately turned grim. The other soldiers were taken by astonishment. If that message was true, then this group of freshmen had really escaped from the pursuit of the spirit race. How was that even possible? Was this something that freshmen were capable of? Even the most experienced Great Wall warrior wouldn't dare to boast of being capable of accomplishing this. Quickly bring them to recover. There'll be no restriction on the amount of gene potions used. Ensure that they are recovered to their optimum condition, commanded the general. Yes. The group of soldiers stepped forth. Hold on. Fong Lin suddenly took a step forward and spoke up. General, we're fine. We've just overexerted ourselves. Please check the Great Wall University's entry records to see if Dong Wang Taichu and Augustus have returned. The general immediately used his authority to flip through the Great Wall University's records and said in a deep voice, No. General, please send out reinforcements to rescue them immediately. Fong Lin spoke up in a deep voice. When we were chased by the spirits, we had split into three groups to avoid being completely annihilated. Seeing that we're the only ones who have returned, it's likely that they are still being chased by the spirits. What? Hearing that, the general immediately issued orders. Very soon two star warship headed in the direction where Fong Lin and the others came from. You guys, follow me. The general led them into the depths of the star fortress. After passing through over ten sentinel stations, they arrived in a big hall. The big hall was like a huge pillar that shot up toward the sky. Every layer was filled by people that were looking at them from a high spot. Countless gazes gathered like countless arrows that wanted to pierce through them. Ordinary people wouldn't be able to withstand this immense pressure. Fong Lin breathed deeply and took a seat, sitting upright and regulating his breathing. He looked straight to the front. With the experience in the military tribunal previously, he didn't feel too anxious this time around. However, the other's breathing started to become rushed. The cultivation of everyone present was far above theirs, and the pressure made them feel extremely unwell. Freshman Fong Lin, what on earth happened? A marshal with a burly physique sat at the very top and looked at him with eagle eyes, his voice sounding hoarse and grim. Three obvious blade marks came down from his forehead, slashing through even his skull, making him appear even more imposing. He was one of the ten marshals in the Great Wall Army, Interstellar Warfare Marshal Zhang Longkai. The moment this person appeared, all the freshmen drew in a gasp of cold air. There were ten marshals in the Great Wall Army, each of them governing over different battle responsibilities, including the defensive warfare, guerrilla warfare, espionage warfare, etc. Every marshal had their unique troop. This interstellar warfare marshal primarily governed over the interstellar warfare unit. They were the most valiant army that focused on attack over defense. They spent a long period in the external star systems, hunting extraterrestrial races and proving that they were the most valiant in the Great Wall Army. The freshmen were the Great Wall University's future and when they were being killed consecutively, this big shot was alarmed. We followed the school's plan to assault the spirit race nest. However, we fell into their ambush and the instructor was swallowed by the spirit black hole. We could only split up and escape, Fong Lin briefly explained the entire course of events. What? Spirit black hole. That's a Kingrade spirit life form. How did they manage to escape from it? That's impossible. Are you sure that you aren't lying? A strong gleam shone in the marshal's eyes, as if wanted to pierce through Fong Lin and the other freshmen, seeing through all the secrets. This was far too unbelievable and even he would need to ascertain once again. I didn't lie. Fong Lin spoke in a deep voice. The other freshmen can stand witness to this. That's right. There's really a spirit black hole. There's a rumor that someone has divulged our mission. We saw and experienced it for ourselves. There's no way that this is a lie. With their innocence on the line, the other freshmen started to speak up as well. Fong Lin had been prepared for this. 
I have the encrypted message the instructor had sent out before his death and the images recorded by the space shuttle. Marshall, please have a look. He sent over two sets of data. The marshal opened them up, and his expression instantly became unprecedentedly solemn and infuriated. A wave of fiendish aura emitted out and came pressing down on everyone like a massive mountain. Everyone present didn't dare make a sound. The marshal was clearly infuriated and everyone didn't dare to incur his wrath. The aura was oppressing and suffocating. How dare they? Spirit race, we will fight it out with you to the bitter end. The marshal let out an enraged bellow. There seemed to be flames spurting out from his eyes, with sound waves filling up the entire sky. Under the strong pressure, everyone lowered their heads and held their breaths. They didn't even dare to breathe too loudly. Very long later, the marshal regained his composure. He looked at Fong Lin with a gaze that was filled with admiration and praise. Fong Lin. You've done well. You led the team to escape from the spirit race's pursuit and accomplished something that countless seniors haven't been able to do. You've earned yourself unrivaled military merit. Chapter 384, Great Reward Excellent. You guys have earned the unrivaled military merit. To be able to escape from the spirit race's pursuit and bring back important information that the instructor had handed to you back, to the Great Wall University. This mission has been completed outstandingly. It has been many years since we've such outstanding freshmen. The marshal looked at Fong Lin and the other freshmen with an admiring expression. His word undoubtedly was an admittance that what Fong Lin had said was the truth. The teachers and students who were watching this broke into a commotion. To think that it's real. A group of freshmen had escaped from the spirit race's pursuit. How is that possible? Why is it impossible? Even the marshal has admitted it. How could it be false? What I'm curious about is how they do it. A series of guesses and discussions broke out. However, this matter hadn't ended. What was even more astonishing had yet to come. The marshal looked at the images that Fong Lin had sent over, and his eyes suddenly shone with a sharp and piercing glow. You guys used that strange red fog to kill the spirit whale and spirit black hole in succession. What on earth is that? There was suddenly a strong urgency in his deep voice. A commotion broke out in the surroundings once again. It's one thing that they managed to escape, but to think that this group of freshmen have even killed a spirit whale and spirit black hole. That's too much of an exaggeration. The spirit whale is a huge spirit and it would require at least an elite adept to be able to kill it. And the spirit black hole is a king-grade spirit life form. Without consecutive attacks from a grand adept, it would be impossible to even break through its defenses. These freshmen are merely grand cultivators at most and are three major realms away. This is simply a miracle. This image can't be a fake, right? The more they understood how terrifying the spirit race was, the more they realized that what Fong Lin and the group had done was extremely unbelievable. It was inevitable for there to be suspicions. The marshal couldn't be bothered to explain much. With a tap of his finger, he projected the images of Fong Lin's group. Swoosh swoosh swoosh. Countless gazes were instantly attracted. A silver-colored impressive-looking space shuttle traveled in the wormhole and was being chased after by a spirit whale. Bang bang bang. Red fog permeated the entire wormhole, lighting up the spirit whale's massive body like gunpowder. In the end, it scattered into flames explosively in the wormhole. Everyone held their breaths and watched the scene in disbelief. The fact was presented before them. This was far too unbelievable. What on earth was that red fog? Boom. When the spirit black hole appeared, everyone gasped. That massive body engulfed everything. The complete darkness made one feel extreme despair and suffocation just from watching the projection. It was extremely terrifying. What quickly followed was a series of difficult pursuit in the wormhole. Cannons were launched, blasting countless spirit monsters into dregs. 
However, the spirit black hole gradually closed in, causing the space shuttle to enter an impasse. At this moment, a series of enraged and hysterical roars rang out in the scene. Fire the cannon! An ordinary-looking metallic cannonball was launched, achieving great success with one strike. Purplish-red flames blasted a huge hole in the spirit black hole's body and burned ceaselessly. Boom! Boom! What followed was the launching of two more cannonballs that shot into the greatest depths of the spirit black hole's body, crushing its internal organs. Under everyone's surprised gaze, the spirit black hole crumbled from inside, bursting into a ball of flames and suddenly exploding. Explosions broke out in the entire wormhole and then the scene disappeared. All of these are real. This group of freshmen had really killed a spirit black hole. What is that red fog? What cannonball has such prowess? The gazes of everyone became scorching hot. The red fog was simply the nemesis of the spirit race. If it could be mass-produced and used in battle, they might be able to turn the tables around against the spirit race. As the leader of the military force, the marshal was well aware of this point. He took a long look at Fong Lin and asked in a deep voice, What is that? Crimson refinement gunpowder. Fong Lin replied calmly. What is its effect? The marshal went straight to the point, with pressing urgency in his voice. Fong Lin instantly fell silent. The crimson refinement gunpowder was a product of his painstaking efforts. How could he reveal it so easily? He wouldn't give up on his principles so easily even if he was facing the interstellar warfare marshal. Seeing that Fong Lin didn't give a reply after very long, the marshal frowned and guessed what Fong Lin was thinking. He said calmly, don't worry. Our Great Wall University won't treat any students shabbily. If you share the refining method of the Crimson Refinement Gunpowder, the university will give you great compensation. Our Great Wall University is one of the top 10 cosmos universities in the universe. There's no reason for us to exploit the students' resources. The marshal said this to appease Fong Lin's wariness. Fong Lin nodded. If that were the case, it wouldn't be bad. The Crimson Refinement Gunpowder was a great killing weapon that targeted the spirit race. It'd be too much of a waste if he was the only one holding on to it. Only the Great Wall University would be able to bring its value to the greatest level and help out the interstellar humans, even more. If there was sufficient compensation, it would be fine to just give out a single medicine refinement technique. Fong Lin replied, the crimson refinement gunpowder is a type of energy catalyst. It can create a high-speed reaction to energies, breaking their original structure. This gunpowder doesn't have much impact on other matter-based life forms. However, they are like an epidemic existence to energy-based life forms like the spirit race. Spirit epidemic? The marshal's eyes gleamed even stronger. How did you refine it? It's something I had obtained by luck from some other mythological ruin. Fong Lin gave an ambiguous reply. Is the technique transferable? The marshal asked a crucial question. Fong Lin shook his head. No. I'm the only one who can learn this technique. It's my unique medicinal refinement technique. Other people won't be able to refine it successfully. Is it really impossible? The marshal's eyes narrowed and he sent out an aura as heavy as a mountain, pressing on Fong Lin. Fong Lin faced it and said, being neither servile nor overbearing, this is my secret art. Unless I choose to impart it to someone else, other people won't be able to refine it even if they were to have the recipe. Although the marshal's pressure was astonishing, Fong Lin had come across many different situations and didn't waver. The marshal thought deeply about this, came to a decision, and said, Fong Lin, you've attained great battle merit after killing your way out from the pursuit of spirits. I'll give you the scholarship that's worth 50 million contribution points and 1 million academic points. Since the Spartan training has ended, you're undeniably the number one amongst the freshmen. Your team members will each also receive 1 million contribution points and 1,000 academic points. The marshal announced great rewards. 
all the other freshmen's eyes were wide open. They had a blissful feeling as if they had suddenly struck it rich overnight. Everyone nodded, not feeling any astonishment. Given the merit that Fong Lin and this group had achieved, they deserved such a great reward. However, what the marshal said next caused a great commotion. Fong Lin, I've decided to award you the title of second lieutenant. You'll take charge of a medicine refinement department in the Great Wall Army's logistics unit and focus on studying the Crimson Refinement Gunpowder. Chapter 385, New Second Lieutenant What? The marshal has promoted him to a second lieutenant in one go? This kid has gotten lucky. He managed to soar up to great heights in just one step. The Great Wall University's graduation test is extremely strict and only the students who officially graduated and stay in the school could get the second lieutenant title. Humph. This second lieutenant ranking is merely a temporary title. The marshal probably just wants him to give the refinement technique for the crimson refinement gunpowder to the military. That's hard to say. Military titles aren't something to be given easily. A second lieutenant is a second lieutenant, even if he is one that manages the logistic unit. No matter how high one's cultivation is, as long as their military title is lower than his, they would have to respectfully perform a military salutation before him. That's right. Once he becomes a second lieutenant, the treatment and status he would get in the Great Wall University would turn 180 degrees. There hasn't been any precedence in which one obtained a military title before they graduated. Which graduate hadn't become someone who took the school by storm? Astonishment, jealousy. All sorts of voices rang out incessantly. Phone Lin was merely a newly enrolled freshman but had been given the second lieutenant title by the marshal. Understandably, it instantly caused everyone to feel jealousy and hatred toward him. However, since the marshal had already made his decision, it was impossible for them to change it. Second lieutenant title? Phone Lin secretly nodded. This was better. The crystallization technique for each gene potion was different. So, without alchemy and a powerful spiritual force as the foundation, it was impossible for the others to derive the complete technique. Other than killing and damaging spirits, the crimson refinement gunpowder didn't have many other uses. It was a unique potion and Phone Lin didn't have much use for it either. However, things would be completely different if it was given to the Great Wall University. This was a great killing weapon. Given the university's resource storage, they would be able to refine sufficient crimson refinement gunpowder and deal serious damage to the spirit race. This would be considered as contributing to the university or mankind. After all, he wouldn't lose out at all to be getting the second lieutenant title. Thank you, Marshal. Fong Lin nodded and pay his gratitude. The Marshal smiled. He knew that since Phone Lin had said this, it meant that he had completely agreed to his plan. We've gotten the information, so you guys can go back now. Next, we'll need to capture the spy. I shall see who was the one betraying their ancestry for glory. To think that they would dare to scheme and harm our university's talents. The marshal's smile was now filled with brazen killing intent and was very cold. One could imagine that if the spies were to be caught, they would definitely not be let off easily. Under the protection of the interstellar warriors, Fong Lin and the others left the place orderly. A set of military uniforms and a military badge was brought before Fong Lin. When the other freshmen saw this, their expressions were extremely complicated. In a flash, this person who was of the same age as them had already thrown them far behind his back, becoming an existence that they could only look up to. They had been top-notch geniuses amongst their generation since young. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten into a cosmos university. However, the most brutal thing in the world was that there were still differences between geniuses. In this case, the difference between them was even greater than that between geniuses and ordinary people. When Phong Lin had just enrolled in school, he was merely an elite cultivator. However, he had become a grand cultivator within merely one month and stood firmly at the top of the newbie board. 
Before they could catch up to him and surpass him, he had become a second lieutenant, having a rank at the same level as those who had officially graduated from the school. Thus, who could they complain to about this? Everyone felt both gloomy and admiration in their hearts. Fong Lin himself didn't feel too much about this. Previously, his foundation had been too weak and he was restricted by his background and environment. Moreover, the time he cultivated was too short. He had already given it his all to be able to get into a Cosmos University. However, things were different after he came to Great Wall University. As long as he had contribution points, he would be able to freely exchange them for any resources. When no conditions restricted him, the effects of the genetic equations were brought to their extreme. When paired with a complete set of mythological knowledge inheritance, the unleashed effect wouldn't be as simple as 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. It would be an explosive growth. Those of the same age as him were thrown far behind him, but this was something within expectations. His future would forever be in the wide interstellar space. Fong Lin had never doubted this before. Having made great efforts to successfully escape from their ordeal, Fong Lin and the others were both physically and mentally fatigued. They bade each other goodbye and rushed back to their respective houses. Having survived the calamity and struggled on the verge of death, they instantly felt as if their bodies had been completely emptied after relaxing from the tense state. Fong Lin fell into a deep sleep the moment he dropped onto his bed. He didn't have any dreams for the entire night, and both his body and mind were completely relaxed. He entered the deepest sleep he had ever experienced. When he woke up, his energy had completely recovered and he thought about what he had gained from this trip. After experiencing the spirit race's ambush and pursuit, he increasingly understood the importance of his own strength. The majestic universe was too vast and dark, capable of engulfing any life. The more this was so, the more insignificant he felt he was. Countless interstellar races viewed humans as enemies and had strong urges to wipe them out. Humans were constantly placed in extremely precarious situations and exposed to dangers. No one could escape this. The moment a war broke out, the Great Wall University would be at the front line. Misfortunes and fortunes tended to be paired together. Although he had gained a military rank, it would mean that he would have to stand at the front line. Even if it was just a logistic unit, there would still be dangers. The moment they arrived on the battlefield, at the most dangerous moment, everyone would have to fight it out against the enemies regardless of which department they were from. Strength He must have strength. Only with sufficient strength would he be able to survive in the complicated and dangerous environments. His progress was far too slow if he had to rely on his own cultivation. Therefore, he must open up the furnace and perform alchemy again. Fong Lin went through the alchemy legacy in his mind and eventually decided to make the new pill, called the Nine Revolutions Birth Transformation Pill. This was a rare yin yang pill that split into two pills, one being yin and the other yang. One would have explosive medicinal effects that felt as scorching as flames, while the other would have gentle medicinal effects that felt as cool as ice. If one were to take them together and allow the yin and yang medicinal effects to clash in their body, after going through nine revolutionary changes and impurities cleansing in their bodies, they would be able to go through a complete transformation, enabling them to walk further in their path. The Great Wall University was located on the borders of the Milky Way galaxy and was the first in the area to pioneer the external star systems. Therefore, they had countless rare resources. As long as one had sufficient contribution points, they could purchase almost anything. Fong Lin started to search on the university's database with his identity microchip and found all the ingredients very quickly. Right now, he had a tremendous amount of contribution points, exceeding 50 million points. It'd be a waste to not use them. The Nine Revolutions Birth Transformation Pills grade was above that of the Dragon Tiger Exchange Fetus Pill. It was a top-grade spiritual pill. So to say, its medicinal effect was at least three times stronger than the Dragon Tiger Exchange fetus pill. To the current Fong Lin, only alchemy pills of such a grade could allow him to break through rapidly. 
When the alchemy pills were precious, the medicinal herbs would naturally be extremely expensive as well. Each of them was beyond one's imagination. If it wasn't because he had been awarded 50 million contribution points by the marshal after completing the final mission, Phone Lin wouldn't have been able to afford them. He gritted his teeth and spent 6 million contribution points to order 50 sets of materials in one go. And very soon, robots brought the materials to his room. Phone Lin memorized the alchemy recipe and started the refining process immediately. Chapter 386 Splitting Furnace for Two Uses Open Furnace Phone Lin sat upright with his eyes closed, memorizing the Nine Revolutions Birth Transformation Pills Alchemy Recipe and repeatedly going through the process in his mind. He kept on doing this until he reached a point where he wouldn't make any mistake. Suddenly, a glow burst out from his eyes. The Furnace of Destiny, a pill concoction furnace that had been passed down from ancient times, had been activated with a boom. The flames burned fiercely. He didn't start performing alchemy immediately but kept on forming a series of seals with his hands like butterflies dancing about. The most mysterious thing was that the seals he formed were different, being one yin and one yang and contrasting each other like two sides of a mirror. They worked together perfectly. As his hand seals changed, the furnace's earth fiend true fire split into two. One lump of the flames was agitated to an extreme and burned fiercely, with its temperature surging explosively. The other lump of flames was reserved and flowed quietly like a solid-state molten lava. This was the yin yang pill refinement hand seals. It could split the true fire into two, this way. Each ball of flames could refine two contradicting types of pill while still being a single entity. The furnace would be split up for two uses at the same time. Although this was a basic technique in the split furnace pill refinement technique, it was also a foundational technique. Only after grasping this critical point would one be able to reach a higher level, being able to split the furnace up for three, ten or even one hundred uses at the same time. Other than the changes to his hand seals, his spirit force would also have to be split into two. However, this wasn't that difficult for Fong Lin. The trickier part was how to control the two balls of flames to each take their own forms. Splitting Furnace to Two Uses Each ball of flames would refine an alchemy pill of a different characteristic, thus, the type of flame used in the refinement would be very different as well. It wasn't an easy feat to accomplish this. Phong Lin only started to refine the medicine after he had succeeded in controlling the flames. Yang Pill, Star River Flower, Leaf Tree Root, Fire Python Bladder. Yin Pill, Silver Moon Grass, Unfalling Golden Fruit, Black Clam Pearl. The flowers were like sparkling stars while the grass was like the silver moon. The medicinal herbs required for cultivating the yin yang pills were different and they needed to be refined separately. The star river flower, leaf tree root, fire python bladder, and many other medicinal herbs entered the seething yang fire, while the silver moon grass, unfalling golden fruit, black clam pearl, and other medicinal herbs were put into the yin fire that was like molten lava. One furnace, two flames. The furnace was split up to refine two medicine concurrently. Phong Lin kept forming seals incessantly with his hands and exercised concise control. The many herbs were being refined under the true fire, and impurities turned into smoke and dissipated, leaving behind two liquid beads, one red and one green. Mystic Yin Water Imperishable Glue The two of them turned into two streams of water that sank into the liquid beads and then rapidly getting bigger, before condensing into two crystals. Even when subject to scorching flames, they didn't melt in the slightest. Phong Lin formed seals and once again increased the fire prowess. The earth fiend true fire erupted into intense purplish-red flames with a bang and smelted everything. The crystals started to melt once again, turning back into two liquid gels of different colors. Purple light sand. Eternal star gold. Sand-like material scattered down and glimmered like starlights. They were instantly roasted into liquid, dripping into the gel-like substance. Gloomy Termination Pearl, Dragon Rouge Jade, Unwithered Summer Grass. 
Fong Lin's hand seals kept on changing as he added the various ingredients in a unique manner and specific order. The temperature of the flames continued to rise until it reached an extremely high point, arriving at an incandescent state. The two gel-like substances started to contract incessantly, turning into a spherical form. The medicinal effects combined together, containing no impurities at all. All that was left was the last refining step. Light up fire. Flames permeated the entire furnace, filling up the entire stretch of space. Close furnace. Foam Lin put his hands together and the furnace's lid suddenly closed, locking in the flames. After passing through eight air vents, he could see a spherical object rolling and spinning rapidly in the furnace. The sphere's coarse surface was gradually smoothed out by the tempering of the flames. The strange smell in the air also gradually lightened. This wasn't a sign of failure. Instead, it was a sign that the medicinal effects were slowly being restrained. It meant that success wasn't far off. 9981 Tempering However, he couldn't afford to slack off. The concoction technique for every type of pill was different. The Nine Revolutions Birth Transformation Pill was a top-grade spiritual pill, and the refinement technique was even more complicated. It required one to perform 981 temperature changes and repeatedly temper the pills before each bit of impurities could be removed, reaching 100% purity. Only this procedure would guarantee a perfect pill, free of side effects and produce nine revolutions and complete transformational effect. The pill's success was imminent. Phone Lin brought up his carefulness level to 120% and formed seals in a mysterious rhythm. The flames in the furnace kept on surging due to his actions. The scorching flames scattered down like the spring rain that nourished all lives, seeping into the pill. In the end, two round pills gradually took form in the flames. When success was almost there, before he could send out a mental probe, the two pills seemed to produce some kind of mysterious connection. They broke away from the flames and clashed with each other. A loud boom rang out. The greening pill smashed the red yang pill into dust with a single strike and then it broke down as well. A fragrant fog erupted from the furnace, and the pills dissipated completely. Phong Lin felt regretful. The art of alchemy was deep and profound, and it was very normal for the first attempt to be a failure. However, he felt that he hadn't missed out anything in the alchemy technique. So why would the process end up a failure? He found this to be very strange. Phong Lin recalled his refining steps and derived them in a reversed manner. Finally, after repeating it over ten times, he found an answer. The yin yang pill was a pill that was split into two, with them being the yin and yang respectively. The distribution of energy between the two must be exact. The slightest bit of difference could cause an imbalance in the yin and yang, and thus make it hard for the pill to form successfully. Even if he were to succeed by luck, the medicinal prowess would never be able to achieve a balance after he took the pills. One side would suppress the other. Not only would it not achieve a nine revolutionary transformational effect, but it could also cause the yin and yang to clash and bring about extreme damage to his body. He couldn't be careless about this. Phong Lin visualized the steps carefully until he was sure there wouldn't be any more mistakes. Then he continued the refining process. Even so, he still failed five times, only achieving success after several attempts and implemented improvements. After the alchemy pills were successfully created, their colors had turned into black and white respectively. Other than their colors, there was no difference at all to their size, weight, and shape. Phong Lin didn't hesitate and swallowed the two pills in one go. At the next instant, it felt as if a supernova explosion had taken place and the pills instantly erupted in his stomach, turning into scorching heat and ice-cold currents that kept seething non-stop in his meridians. Each time they circulated for one cycle, they would cross each other, separate, and continue to circulate. It was like the yin and yang cycles kept on repeating and spinning non-stop. The pill was like a millstone that cleansed out the impurities in the flesh, blood, and meridians. Genetic potential plus 
plus 18.9, plus 20.2. As expected of a top-grade spiritual pill. His potential grew at an unprecedentedly rapid rate. Phone Lin sat upright with his legs crossed as he sensed the hot currents in his body. Minute Knowledge Gene plus one, plus one, plus one. Meditation Gene plus one, plus one, plus one. This time around, he was going to awaken another heaven gene in the Sun Wukong mythological path at one go, the Dao Heart Gene. Chapter 387, Unrivaled Dao Heart the moment the Nine Revolutions birth transformation pill entered his stomach, the yin and yang medicinal prowess, one being hot and the other cold, was like a millstone. After Nine Revolutions, they rapidly cleansed his body of impurities. Phong Lin sat upright with his eyes closed. Even his flesh and blood had become translucent like a glaze, lighting up brightly. With each additional transcendent grade genetic point, Phong Lin would add the points decisively. Minute Knowledge Gene plus one, plus one, plus one. Meditation Gene plus one, plus one, plus one. Very quickly, his Minute Knowledge Gene had been maxed out to nine points and the Meditation Gene was increased to eight points. Both of them were maxed out. As the two transcendent grade genes were completely maxed out, two massive golden stars shone brightly. They were like the inextinguishable ancient stars that were hung high up in the starry sky, shining with a flash of great brilliance. A stretch of starlight flowed out like spring water from the golden stars, slowly gathering to one spot, forming a river of stars that extended out majestically toward the depths of the starry ocean. It kept on advancing endlessly. Dao Heart Gene equals Minute Knowledge Gene X9 plus Meditation Gene X8. Dong Dong Dong. A dark star that had laid hidden in the depths of the star ocean was lit up and palpitating like a heart. The river of stars instantly dived into it like a myriad of birds returning to the forest. They were also like the ocean currents that flowed into the Pacific Ocean, channeling an endless amount of energy into the dark star. A huge star was lit up, gradually revealing its true appearance, turning to a sun that scattered out endless light and heat. The entire dark starry sky was lit up, eternally immutable. A strange message flowed out. Gene, Dao Heart Gene. Grade, Perfect Grade Heaven Gene. Strengthening Tally, 1. Ability, Sprouting Dao Heart, Heaven and Man as One. Perfect Grade Gene. It was another perfect grade gene. In an instant, Phong Lin's consciousness rapidly rose and he entered an extremely mysterious domain. He quietly sensed the changes, and streams of colorful glow appeared in the sky. They were like clouds and fog, unreal and couldn't be seen anywhere. However, the fog actually existed. It was crimson and scorching like flames, green and faintly discernible like the wind, black and cold like ice. The attributes were all different. Phone Lin felt as if all the pores in his body had opened up and kept on engulfing. Such misty auras seeped into his body, connecting him with the outside world and the cycle kept on repeating. Streams of cooling auras blew into his body from his pores like the night breeze in autumn, being light and traceless while sweeping away many impurities. It was all the spiritual chi of heaven and earth. If he had faintly sensed strange chi seeping into his body when he had been cultivating previously, then what he was feeling now was like bathing amidst a light breeze that penetrated through the inside of his body. His body released the restraints and became one with the world. His spirit was set free to roam in the universe. The finest details could be seen by him clearly. Many light spots flashed and extinguished before him, their traces were hard to be found. At one moment, they would be here, but at the next moment, they would appear in another place out of nowhere. There were no traces of their movements at all, as if they could leap to the past out of nowhere. The light spots had their own senses and gathered together. They were like air currents that flowed non-stop. Phong Lin was struck with a realization. They were spiritual qi. The light spots were spirit particles. The blurry senses from before had become actual senses. Every stream of spiritual chi and every spirit particle could be sensed without him missing out on anything. 
After figuring out this crucial point, Feng Lin used his spirit force to control the spiritual qi to enter his body, boosting cultivation speed tremendously. The growth of his potential that had slowed down surged once again. Potential plus 20.1, plus 20.2, plus 20. As expected of a perfect grade heaven gene, the Tao heart gene. Feng Lin sensed the changes to his body and felt overjoyed. Sprouting Tao heart, heaven and man as one. Although this Tao heart gene didn't have a great prowess, it could be said to be heaven-defying in terms of its effect on providing support. After the Tao heart gene had awakened, he could only feel that the world, starry sky, and universe before him had become extremely clear. He could see through fabrications, sense the profoundness of the world as well as the vastness of the universe's desolate state, and his spirit integrated into them. From then onward, any invisible mental pressure would be completely useless to him. It was because regardless of how great the pressure was, could they possibly be bigger than the heaven, the earth, and the universe? Phone Lin was overjoyed. Even if this Tao Heart gene didn't have any battle prowess, it was truly powerful. From now on, no matter how strong the opponent was, he would be able to keep his original intent and no longer be overwhelmed by invisible pressure and lose his rationality. In fact, it wasn't as if this Tao Heart gene didn't have any prowess at all. The Tao Heart gene itself didn't possess any killing prowess, but it could make other genes stronger, such as the Monkey King gene. The Monkey King Domain Phone Lin was struck by good fortune and immediately activated this ability. Invisible and formless heart monkey force seeped into the surrounding air, and the space within a range of 6 meters came under his control. Changes suddenly took place. Clatter clatter clatter. First, water vapor rapidly gathered from all directions, forming a long flow of water. They then rapidly converted into flames that burned fiercely. As the flames collided, they produced electricity, and they kept on colliding non-stop. Energy conversions materialized for an instant as they wished without any restrictions. It was as if they were a completely natural occurrence, and there was no longer any need for him to intentionally apply control like he did previously. Everything became instinctive. The Monkey King gene and Tao Heart gene combined to form the Sun Wukong gene. These two genes complemented each other to begin with. The Monkey King domain's essence was to unleash the Heart Monkey Force's ability to control materialistic objects, to their greatest extent in a stretch of space. Right now, having awakened the Tao Heart Gene, although the Monkey King Gene had not extended out in the slightest, it had been reinforced by the Tao Heart Gene and Phone Lin himself had also evolved. His senses of the world's energy became sharper, and his control over it was even more unrestrained. His grasp over the Monkey King domain became smoother and more familiar, thus, the prowess was naturally greater as well. This was actually not just it. Under such in-depth control, Phong Lin faintly had a strange feeling. The control over the domain wasn't as simple as just controlling the energy. It uncovered the fog and entered deep into the intrinsic level. Then what was presented before him right now was Space itself could it be that as the gene continued to get stronger, there would be a day where he would be able to control space-time freely? An interesting and daring thought appeared in Phone Lin's heart. It was extremely crazy, but it was worth a try. However, he would have to start with what he had. After sensing the changes the Tao Heart gene had brought to his body, Phone Lin calmed down and continued to cultivate. Genetic potential plus 20.2, plus 20.2, plus 20.2. The growth to his potential had broken through the mark of 20 per cycle, and the total amount surged up like a rocket. Very soon, it passed the 1000 mark before the speed gradually calmed down. Add point. Phone Lin let out a deep bellow. The Monkey King gene instantly increased from 2 to 3. Boom. The Monkey King domain expanded by itself and kept on extending incessantly until it became a sphere with a 9-meter radius. With the domain covering down, everything was within his control. Each time points were added to the Monkey King gene, his ability would go through an incremental breakthrough. Right now, his attributes had become 
Name, Fong Lin. Vitality, 4289. Heaven Gene, Monkey King Gene X3, Dao Heart Gene X1. Transcendent Gene, Spiritual Stone Monkey Gene X10, Beast King Gene X10, Minute Knowledge Gene X9, Meditation Gene X8. Genetic Potential, 108. Chapter 388, Reporting for Enrollment. The Dao Heart Gene had awakened and the Monkey King Gene was strengthened. After the two heaven genes had been awakened, they complemented each other and Fong Lin's attributes went through an astonishing change. Just his vitality alone had attained a breakthrough past the 4,000 threshold. It wasn't just Fong Lin's actual battle prowess, but even the statistics of his windows had far surpassed that of others in the same generation. He was undoubtedly the number one amongst the freshmen in Great Wall University. Although he had always been at the top of the newbie board, it was just him ranking first in the accumulated points. He was now truly the top newbie. And the more first places he got, the merrier. With the two great genes awakened, next was to devote himself to training, slowly strengthening them to the paragon phase, and then evolve into the next tier, the Sun Wukong gene. However, the higher his cultivation, the slower its speed would be. Money, associates, techniques, land, not one of them could be missed out. Fong Lin was secretly feeling lucky that he had acquired the alchemy inheritance. Otherwise, his improvement wouldn't have been so fast. He was far from having enough nine revolutions birth transformation pills and would need to continue refining them. He recovered his essence, chi, and spirit that had been depleted from the gene strengthening and then started performing alchemy again. The furnace flames burned fiercely. After three days and three nights worth of tough refining, the over 50 sets of medicinal herbs were used up by him, turning into 20 sets of alchemy pills. The refinement technique for top-grade pills was complicated beyond imagination. Even after having accumulated a lot of experience in pills refinement, it was still impossible to achieve a 100% success rate. He kept the alchemy pills carefully. The medicinal effect from the first pill had yet to be fully digested. If he were to continue eating more, not only would the effects be halved, but it would also result in the accumulation of pill toxins in his body, which was hard to be expelled. They could also clash with the medicinal effects of the next pills and rapidly increase his immunity to the medicinal effects. The side effects were tremendous. Genetic potential plus 9.2, plus 9.2, plus 9.2. Fong Lin calmed his mind and tried to get accustomed to the new ability he had received after his genes attained a breakthrough. He also digested the remaining nourishment and energy that was left in his body. After experiencing an escape from an impasse, he finally got a chance to enter a calm, peaceful state to train in seclusion. This continued until two unexpected guests arrived. Ding ding ding. The doorbell rang and woke him up from his meditation. Fong Lin walked out and saw that they were Dong Huang Taichu and Augustus. They appeared completely different from their previously energetic and high-spirited self. Their expressions were that of dejection, with slightly weakened auras, as if they had been dealt a heavy blow. Their vitality was also plunging rapidly. Fong Lin had also detected that one of Augustus's arms was shriveled, as if his flesh and blood had been sapped dry by something. The duo's auras became extremely weak with their bodies completely emptied. Fong Lin, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to make it back this time around. Dong Wang Taichu's expression appeared to be struggling, but the pride in him made him express his thanks to Fong Lin. Thank you. If it wasn't because you came back in advance to report the situation, our team wouldn't have been able to escape the spirit race's pursuit either. Augustus also expressed his thanks despite having one of his hands shriveled up. What happened to the two of you? When Fong Lin saw their horrible states, he couldn't help but ask. The two of them exchanged a bitter smile and Dong Wang Taichu was the first to speak up again. After our three teams split up, we were chased after by the spirit race. However, there wasn't any matter in outer space and we couldn't replenish the space shuttle's energy. 
We drifted out for over 10 days and didn't have any killing moves that were targeted specifically toward the spirit race either. In the end, the space shuttle's protective shield was broken through by the spirits, and we could only fight it out with them. We suffered great casualties and were about to sink into an impasse where we'd definitely lose our lives. But then, the Great Wall University's reinforcement team detected battle waves and arrived in time, they killed the spirit race and saved us. It was only then did we know that you had managed to break away from the spirit race and had sent the news to the Great Wall University. Saying this, both of them revealed respectful and admiring expressions. How on earth did Phone Lin fight a way out from the spirit race's pursuit, leading a team by himself? This was something that they wouldn't be able to accomplish. After arriving back at Great Wall University, they were shocked speechless after they found out the truth. Refining the Crimson Refinement Gunpowder, blasting the Spirit Whale and Spirit Black Hole, and breaking out from the wormhole. Was this something that a human could do? Seeing that the two of them were hesitant to say something, Phone Lin could also guess what they were thinking. He said calmly, You're too kind. There's no need for you to thank me. I just contributed the little power I have for the interstellar humans. After all, all of us are considered geniuses amongst humans and it'd be a great loss for our Great Wall University, and for the interstellar humans if you were to be killed by the spirit race. Although his tone sounded calm, Donghuang Taichu and Augustus still couldn't get themselves to lower their stand and treat it as if they weren't indebted to him, for saving their lives. They each brought out something and passed it to Feng Lin. Feng Lin. This is an alchemy book for the life metal refinement technique. I heard that you're a medicinal refinement grandmaster, so this alchemy book might be useful for you. This is also considered our team's appreciation. Donghuang Taichu was the first to speak up and he brought out a book made from paper. It had an ancient and rustic aura but was maintained in good condition. This is the universe's latest Micro Mecha Battle God X11 model. It can adapt to over 100 types of complicated environments in the universe, and its exterior is made from the interstellar space's strongest J826SG alloy that is extremely sturdy and indestructible. It has extraordinary battle prowess and can bring up a Grand Cultivator's battle prowess by 30%. Augustus's heart seemed to ache a little as he said this. Since the two of them dared to gift these, Feng Lin naturally dared to accept them. He didn't try to put up any hypocritical rejections and accepted them directly. If he didn't accept them, the two wouldn't feel at ease. Things would be a lot more troublesome then. In fact, that was how things were. After Feng Lin accepted the gifts, both Donghuang Taichu and Augustus exchanged a glance, appearing a lot more relieved. After all, being indebted to their life was something too huge. It made them less pressured now that they had given some kind of compensation for it. Donghuang Taichu smiled. The Spartan training has officially ended. Next, all of the freshmen would be sent back to their respective academies. The first and foremost reason we're here is to thank you for saving our lives. Another reason is to inform you that tomorrow is the day to report to the Great Wall University's respective academies. Don't miss out on the date. All right. Feng Lin nodded and answered. After chatting for a while, given that the three of them weren't on familiar terms, they didn't stay long and headed back respectively. Feng Lin didn't try to get them to stay. The first alchemy pill had been completely digested and he brought out another nine revolutions birth transformation pill and swallowed it. He started to cultivate once again. Genetic potential plus 18.8 plus 18.8, plus 18.8. His potential was still growing rapidly, but it had fallen below the 20 mark compared to the first time he had taken the pill. When taken for the second time, the medicinal effects would take a huge plunge. Despite so, after spending one day and one night cultivating, Feng Lin had obtained over 500 points to his genetic potential. When the sun came up the next day, Feng Lin walked out and headed in the direction of the Mythology Academy. Unlike how other academies had a strong feeling of technology, the Mythology Academy was purely constructed from bricks. 
It was like an ancient and majestic palace in the myths and legends that had appeared in the mortal world. There would be students entering and leaving occasionally, with each of them having a great aura that was no weaker than his. These were clearly his seniors in the Mythology Academy. When they saw Fong Lin, many of them looked over at this new face curiously. However, it was just a freshman coming to report. Not many of them paid him much heed after taking a few more glances. You must be Fong Lin. At that moment, a voice rang out. Fong Lin turned and looked over. He saw a graceful middle-aged teacher walking over. The teacher's eyes instantly lit up when he saw Fong Lin. That's me. Fong Lin replied. It's good that you've come. I've been waiting for you for very long, Deputy Dean Hai told me to wait for you here. Come with me quickly to go and meet the dean. The middle-aged teacher brought Fong Lin straight into the depths of the academy. He's Fong Lin? I heard that he's ranked first amongst this batch of freshmen and that he has come to our mythology academy. He has a great reputation. He's so amazing? Then is he an idiot to come to the worst academy in the university? Many students from previous batches started to talk amongst themselves. Fong Lin followed the middle-aged teacher and arrived in a rustic pavilion building. He entered and looked around inside. The place was like a museum that was filled with all sorts of ancient books and tools. Holographic projections flashed in the air, displaying the images of various ancient ruins. An old man with white hair and a youthful face was deeply engrossed in studying them. It was only after Fong Lin had gotten close did he notice it and raise his head. It was Master Hai that had recruited Fong Lin to the Mythology Academy. Chapter 389 Attention and Salutation Master Hai was known to be a professional in the area of myths and legends in the Great Wall University, or even in the entire interstellar space. He had a great reputation, wore Huaxia ancient long robe, and his white beard fluttered with the wind. He was a person with distinguishing characteristics. Fong Lin recognized him the moment he set his eyes on him. When Master Hai saw Fong Lin, he smiled as well. Fong Lin, thankfully I recruited you in advance. Otherwise, the Mythology Academy won't be able to hold you back now. Do you know that the other academies are now fighting for you to enroll in their academies? What you've done during this period has been exemplary, pressing down all the other academies' students completely. You're really amazing. He stroked his long beard as he said this, his face full of praises for Fong Lin. Dean, you're too kind. Fong Lin said, being neither too conceited nor rash. Master Hai nodded and didn't continue with the useless talk. He went straight to the point. The reason I've called you over on the first day of enrollment is to explain things to you in person, and make arrangements for your learning missions. By right, freshmen would have to learn from the school's arranged courses after enrollment. But your situation is special. You've already become a second lieutenant before you officially enrolled in the school. This is an extremely special case. Based on the latest news that we've received, the spirit race is now raring to move and could set off a war against our Great Wall University at any moment. Therefore, your military responsibilities are more important than your learning missions. There's a need to set our priorities straight. The arrangement that the Academy has set for you is to perform your military missions first before going on with the learning courses. I can give you special rights to this. As long as you can obtain results that are outstanding or higher in every test in the future, you can make arrangements for your courses freely. What do you think about this? Master Hai looked at Fong Lin with great interest. Not attending classes, but yet obtaining outstanding results in the tests, this wasn't something that ordinary people would be able to do. However, since Fong Lin had done so many surprising things, Master Hai couldn't help but have more anticipation while he gave Fong Lin special rights. All right. Fong Lin agreed without giving it much thought. Master Hai was stunned for a moment. You don't need to put more consideration into this? If you find it difficult, I can make special arrangements for you to have a tutor. However, 
Feng Lin shook his head. There's no need. He had the confidence. He understood all of Earth's myths and legends, and the Mythology Academy's courses on them weren't of much use to him. Those teachers couldn't even be compared with him, so how could they possibly be able to tutor him? The reason why he had joined the Mythology Academy was only because he wanted to find out the traces of ancient mythological civilizations through the mythological ruins records that the Mythology Academy had. You really don't need it? Master Hai asked, surprised. Really? Feng Lin replied honestly. Seeing that Feng Lin didn't seem to be putting up an act, Master Hai nodded but secretly smiled. After the semester ends, let's see if you still have this much confidence. However, at this moment, Feng Lin spoke up again, Deputy Dean, I would like to request something. Since I've chosen to freely make arrangements for my courses, can the Academy allow me to freely browse through all records on the mythological ruins? When Master Hai heard this, he immediately found it strange, are you thinking of mastering from self-study? You want to leap up to become a professional in myths and legends before you've gained knowledge on it? Feng Lin smiled and didn't reply. Master Hai assessed him from top to bottom. Fine. I shall see what's the limits to your abilities. Open up your identity microchip. I'll give you the right to freely browse through the Mythology Academy's database on myths and legends. The content of the mythological ruins that the Academy recorded is converted into data and stored in it. However, if you wish to see the actual item, you'll have to come personally to make an application. Some of the things are unique in the world and are priceless, thus having layers of protection. You must first get the school's approval before getting to them. When the time comes, I'll do my best to give you the greatest extent of convenience. Thank you, Deputy Dean. Feng Lin nodded and didn't raise any overboard requests. It was already beyond his expectations to be given such great authority. If he continued to be greedy, he'd be too much. When Master Hai heard this, he also smiled. There's no need to be like this. It's been several decades since someone who is ranked first amongst the freshmen has come to our Mythology Academy. No matter how much of a decline our Mythology Academy is in, we can't possibly let a good seed like yourself go to waste, right? Saying this, he winked playfully. When Feng Lin heard this, he also smiled, feeling that he hit it off very well with this old man. Then, the two of them continued to chat about the general knowledge after enrolling in the school. After that, Feng Lin didn't continue to disturb Master Hai's research and took the initiative to ask to leave. Master Hai watched for very long as the long and slender figure gradually left. He smiled. This kid was getting increasingly special. In the future, he might be able to bring about a very different change to the Mythology Academy and Great Wall University. It was really interesting to find out how far Feng Lin's future development would go. With this matter settled, what's next was to report at the Great Wall Army's logistic unit. Feng Lin thought of this as he walked out of the Mythology Academy's front gate. Look. That freshman has come out. A group of students quickly crowded over. They emitted strong auras and had a vitality of at least 8,000 or higher. Every one of them was a high-level grand cultivator and the person in the lead emitted an intense vitality pressure. He had probably attained a breakthrough to the adept realm. Are you the number one freshman, Feng Lin, who has just enrolled in the school? The person in the lead spoke up with an air of superiority. The corners of Feng Lin's lips curled up into a hint of a smile. Another immature and inexperienced guy had come to court trouble. He wanted to see what tricks these people were going to pull. And who are you? He looked straight into the person's eyes, not giving a reply but posed a question instead. Brat, how can you speak with Senior Gua like this? What impudence? Don't know any respect. The other lackeys started bawling. However, the person in the lead waved his hand to get them to shut up. He then spoke up in a deep voice, I'm called Gua Beichen, your senior in the third year. I'm also the president of the Mythology Archaeology Society, the top ten club in the Mythology Academy. 
You don't look bad, so I'm giving you a place in the club. Quickly fill up the form and join in. If you were to waste this chance, there won't be another. After saying this, he sent an electronic form to Phone Lin's identity microchip directly without caring whether Phone Lin agreed to this arrangement, or not. He spoke with arrogance as if giving Phone Lin a spot was a tremendous honor. However, Phone Lin didn't even take a look and deleted the form directly. What a joke. If he wished to join a club, he could have joined the club that Marshal Queen Zhao Yi was in. Why would he need to join this undistinguished club? No need. Thank you. Phone Lin politely declined and paved a way through the crowd as he tried to leave. What impudence. You're given face, but to think that you don't know any better. What an arrogant freshman. Do you think that you're that amazing just because you're ranked first amongst the freshmen? You're but a mere grand cultivator. The other members of the Mythology Archaeology Society reprimanded him and crowded over. Guaybechen's eyes narrowed and his expression turned somber. Phong Lin was just a freshman and yet he had obtained the title of second lieutenant. His reputation in the school was great and if they could get him to join their club, it would boost the Mythology Archaeology Society's reputation. Guaybechen, as the president, would also obtain great benefits from this. He had thought that a freshman would be easy to control but hadn't expected Phong Lin to not show him any face at all. It seemed that Phong Lin wouldn't know what was good for him if he wasn't taught a lesson. He released a dangerous aura. Phong Lin looked calmly at this group's ugly faces. It was a waste of his energy to raise his hands against them, thus, he took out something from his pocket and pinned it in front of his chest with indifference. When the others saw this scene, they were immediately startled. It was the second lieutenant's badge. Phong Lin spoke up calmly, aren't you guys going to salute when you see an officer? Or have you forgotten about the Great Wall University's school rules? At the mention of the school rules, they immediately shuddered and instinctively stood at attention, performing a military salutation. Greetings, officer. After they got back to their senses, their expressions were instantly filled with grief. However, they didn't dare put down their hands. The Great Wall University was a militarized school. Therefore, the rules were strict and no joke, no one dared to violate them recklessly. Fong Lin nodded and walked up to Gua Beichen. So, is the Mythology Archaeology Society, being such a big club, thinking of violating the school rules? It seems that your club doesn't wish to continue its operation. Gui Beichen's eyes narrowed intensely and he felt shocked, angered, but also fearful at the same time. His trembling hand lifted slowly and he respectfully saluted, standing upright. Very good. I'm ordering all of you to do 10,000 frog leaps on the spot. If there's anyone who dares to go against the orders, don't blame me for not going easy on you. Fong Lin smiled coldly. Being just one rank higher could flatten everyone else, let alone that these people were just a group of soldiers while Phone Lin was already a second lieutenant. The school rules were military rules. The consequences would be extremely dire if they were to violate them. They exchanged a glance and had no choice but to start sticking out their butts and jumping on the spot, feeling extremely aggrieved. Many ridiculing laughs rang out from the surroundings, and they gritted their teeth so tightly that it felt like they were going to shatter. However, they didn't notice that Phong Lin had walked far away. It wasn't until a while later that a hysterical and agonizing howl rang out behind Phong Lin. Phong Lin, this isn't over between us. Phong Lin smiled coldly and gradually headed far away. He wasn't interested in seeing a group of men sticking out their butts. What indecency! Chapter 390, Mythology Collection Society After returning to his residence, Phone Lin didn't start cultivating immediately but sat cross-legged as he went deep into through. A club. I can create a club by myself. He suddenly realized this. Clubs were student societies in the university that gathered people with similar interests. It wasn't as if they were completely useless. 
right now, he had officially enrolled and had obtained the right to attend classes freely. Other than for his individual strength, it might be more beneficial if he could concurrently strengthen his influence. The power of a single individual was still far too weak. There was a limit to a person's energy. Because of the daily cultivation, he wouldn't have too much free time. However, if he were to create a club, joining many people's powers and accumulating little drops of water that made up an ocean, their efficiency would increase in folds. But how were the steps to establish a club? Fong Lin opened up the Great Wall University's intranet and started searching. He realized that forming a club wasn't an easy task and there were many requirements. Firstly, it was required to pay 1 million contribution points as the club's activity funds. Secondly, the club's objective mustn't violate the interstellar humans' laws and the Great Wall University's school rules. Thirdly, there must be a fixed location for club activities. And most importantly, the club's founder must obtain at least the non-commissioned military title. These conditions were naturally very harsh for other people. However, they weren't too difficult for Phong Lin. He would just need to put in some effort. He had already accomplished the most difficult criteria. He was already a second lieutenant and was three ranks higher than a non-commissioned officer. The convenience of having a military ranking in the Great Wall University far surpassed Phong Lin's imagination. It was easy to gain contribution points but hard to get a military ranking. Phong Lin browsed for a while and discovered that a military title represented a person's rights in the Great Wall University. Some rare resources, genetic cultivation arts, and large-scale killing weapons were the privileges, and only people with relevant military titles would be able to purchase them. The school rules were strict and there were many restrictions that restrained ordinary people's freedom. One could only get a certain amount of freedom when their military titles got increasingly higher. Since Fong Lin already had a military title, it was naturally not difficult to set up a club. However, when he needed to enter the club's information on the Star Network, he was stumped. What kind of club should he set up? Fong Lin started to think about this from his own requirements and immediately had an idea. He keyed in the words, Mythology Collection Society. As its name suggested, this was a club that specially gathered or stored various mythological relics. Mythological ruins were passed down from ancient times and over so many years, there were constantly all sorts of strange objects that were excavated. Their abilities were unknown and each of them had their strange points. Some of them didn't comply with scientific theories at all, yet could unleash their effects in the real world. There were no lack of organizations amongst the interstellar humans that studied these mythological relics, wanting to resolve the mysteries behind ancient myths and legends. Phong Lin had heard about them a long time ago. He had the same idea and thus set up this mythology collection society. Mythological relics were of exorbitant prices and would require a large amount of contribution points, star coins, or various other funds in exchange for them. If it were in the past, Phong Lin would feel very troubled. However, he was now a big shot in the Great Wall University. With his alchemy, money won't be an issue to him. Right now, he had astonishing privileges, and the club was quickly established. He was the president, a leader without followers. However, Phong Lin was in no hurry to recruit members. Mythological relics had exorbitant prices and weren't something that ordinary people could afford to meddle with. The Mythology Collection Society was essentially an elite club and there mustn't be incompetent people whose use was just to make up for the numbers. If this was the case, the requirements would be very strict. Just keeping the range within the Great Wall University was still far too small. Although the Great Wall University was very big, it was just one of the top 10 universities in the universe. Given that he could only manage the club in one school, the intake rate was still too slow. He should think of a way to establish a mythology collection society in each of the top 10 schools in the universe. He would then slowly get stronger and then establish a similar organization in the interstellar space. The efficiency could only speed up greatly by then. Phong Lin gave it some thought and instantly had an idea. 
he could turn this mythology collection society into a subsidiary organization for the Mythological Genes Association in real life and let the other five members set up a mythology collection society in their respective schools. If they could establish the Mythology Collection Society successfully, he would be able to pass down mythological knowledge and other similar rewards with his identity as Dao Ancestor Hongjun. He could use this as a starting point and gradually extend out to the top 10 schools in the universe. With an idea to kickstart things, Feng Lin had gradually figured out his future plans. A long time had passed. It was time to call for the first gathering of the Mythological Genes Association. Feng Lin sighed. It hadn't really been that long. Only about one to two months had passed. It was just that he had been through far too much during this period, and it gave him the feeling that things remained the same but the people had changed. Feng Lin entered the virtual universe through the virtual cabin. His body appeared on Mythology Planet. Although the virtual universe was great, he hadn't ever lost himself in it. Everything was but an illusion. It had been very long since he had logged into the virtual universe, and he couldn't help but develop an unfamiliar feeling. He sent out a message to the other five using his Wukong virtual ID. He quietly waited. The mythology planet was still lifeless, and the scenery was as monotonous as before. Feng Lin mobilized his rights as the creator god, using his identity as Dao Ancestor Hong Jun to go through another round of creation. Countless myths and legends that had been established on Earth rose from the ground. The Western Greeks' Hall of the Gods, South America's Mayan Pyramid, Japanese Mount Fuji. Out of all these, Washa's land had the most obvious changes. Kunlun, Wudong, Longhu, and many other mythological scenes appeared in succession. Each of them had their own wonderful aspects. It was as if red-crowned cranes had soared concurrently, bringing about a paradise in the mortal world. There was even Mount Amaze Jinding, Snow Mountain's Sky Lake, Heavenly Pillar Divine Mountain, and many other mysterious sceneries. These changes took place within a single thought, moving freely with Feng Lin's heart, presenting all the memories he had about myths and legends. Ah! Suddenly, a series of gasps rang out. Feng Lin looked over and saw five figures appearing in the starry sky outside of the mythology planet. They were all in awe as they watched the astonishing changes that were taking place on the planet. Is this the appearance of the mythology planet? Could these be the actual images from ancient myths and legends? As expected of the Tao ancestor. All sorts of thoughts flashed through in their minds as they stared at the changes that were taking place on Mythology Planet, not letting go of the smallest detail. These mythological constructions were radiating the truth and were all precious knowledge. Knowledge was priceless. The five members of the Mythological Genes Association all had different objectives. One of them, the fatty, had his entire body glimmering in golden light. He held on to a divine tool and was wearing all sorts of rare equipment, standing out from all the rest. His wealthy disposition couldn't be restrained and was extremely piercing. Yana, Eris, Suli, and E were all taken by astonishment as well. This fatty was also a member of the Mythological Genes Association? How on earth did he manage to get in? Fatty was also secretly assessing the other four. Did the Mythological Genes Association unknowingly grow stronger? It seems that ever since I got into the Milky Way Cosmos University, Dao friend Wukong hasn't been slacking. Just as they were each guessing each other identities, the layers of cloud suddenly exploded, revealing a majestic palace with a lofty celestial air. Come in. Dao ancestor Hongjuan's calm voice rang out. The five of them exchanged a glance and entered in succession. Thank you.